Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video, I'm going to be reviewing Transformers 5, the last night that I ever go see a Transformers movie in the theater. I haven't done a movie review in a little while, and I'm sad to tell you that uh, this movie review may not be that entertaining if you're a big Transformers fan. I'm going to put it out there, right in the front. Not the best film in the world. Let's start with that. Now, I will preface the rest of the review by telling you I'm not going to do any spoilers in this video. There's nothing that's important enough to bother spoiling. It's just more of the same thing in terms of good and bad, so I'm not going to talk about it at all, even at the very end. It just doesn't matter. And an important thing to note is that I am not against the Bayformer universe or the Bayformer franchise, whatever you want to call it, especially when it came out. I was all for it. I think it makes perfect sense to have the Transformers designed the way they were designed in the beginning of this franchise, the, the more complex transformations, that kind of thing, not just the, the Lego block cars that stand up type of thing. I get it. Like, G1's fine. This was fine too for me, so I'm not against it in any way. I loved the first movie when it came out. I even liked the second one more than most people. Third one started to go downhill for kind of a disaster. I might have reviewed it on this channel. I think I did. It wasn't very good. So now, people were hoping, hey, number five's coming along. Maybe it'll be good. Nope. Maybe Michael Bay won't be Michael Bay. Nope. Michael Bay says he's not going to do any more after this one. Not likely. As soon as he's going to be able to make some more money, he's going to hop right back in. He's already done it a couple of times. Maybe only once, but either way. I don't think we're going to be able to get rid of him. And here's the thing. Michael Bay is doing exactly what we knew he was going to do. And they're okay with that. There's no reason for him to stop doing it. They're throwing money at him to keep doing what he's doing that we don't like. Generally speaking. I know some people do. There's still way too many explosions. Every explosion still looks like fireworks going off. There's still horrible storytelling. There's still horrible jokes. It's still not a good movie. But he can direct action pretty well, and uh, and I guess that's enough for them. Hasbro doesn't care. They're going to be able to sell the toys, and that's all that matters, and I guess that's it. So we're stuck with it. Okay, so enough of this meta stuff. Let's talk about the movie itself. The general premise of this movie is we're going to take a bunch of things from the universe, the Transformers fiction, the lore that's been established over, what, almost 40 years? Almost 40 years now, I think. So they're, they're going to take all of these different things that people have wanted in the franchise and we're going to mix them all up in a way that's not quite accurate, doesn't really follow the, follow the fiction, and we're going to turn it into something that's not very good. I don't mind when a movie, when a, a cinematic universe takes liberty with the fiction. That makes sense. It happens. Not every time is the fiction in a comic book or a kids TV show based on action figures. I mean, not every time is that going to translate to live action directly. I get that. But if you're going to take what does exist and make it even worse in that direction, then you might as well just use what's already there. I don't get it. And since I'm not going into spoilers, I can't talk about specifics, but you'll see if you know about the Transformers fiction, and I know it's been rewritten a few times, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. They hint at things, they have characters show up that do things, and none of it lines up with the fiction. Not really anyway. So it's just kind of, meh. There is a nod to Transformers Prime which was a decent show for the first season. But uh, that's about it in terms of direct connections. I, maybe I'm missing some of the big picture things, but I don't think so. Let's talk about the writing first. The writing in this movie is as you would expect. Awful. It's terrible. It's really bad. The jokes, bar none, terrible jokes. They're not funny. The only time anybody laughed in the theater was after the joke at the joke. Not because the joke was funny, but because it wasn't. Because it was so awkward and poorly implemented and ill-timed, the people laughed at the movie. Now I will say, give them a little bit of credit, this movie didn't have any pedophilia or statutory rape jokes in it, so it's a step up from the last movie. Even from the very beginning, when we're starting back in medieval time, we saw the, the, the Dark Ages scene in the trailer. Like 30 seconds in, we have stupid jokes right off the bat. It's just... It was indicative of the movie to come, and, and they didn't disappoint in that regard. Another bad thing about the movie is it's filled with contradictions. It contradicts itself constantly, whether it's just one character saying something or doing something that doesn't fit the world or fit the universe or fit the setting or fit the, the stuff that's going on, or if it's actually retconning things that happened in the fiction earlier in the movies. Other movies and this movie, it, it's just a mess. It's a total mess. 
And sure, you can go out on a limb and say, well, it's a secret, so they couldn't talk about it in the other movies, and now they have to reveal it. And no, it's not a secret to the people involved. They didn't mention it at all because they didn't know it was going to be a secret until this movie came out. Generally speaking, these movies consist of action spliced up with some exposition. The exposition in this movie, just not good. Again, not good. It's, it's either not there at all, they, they just say, okay, this is happening, or it's just really heavy-handed where they say, literally, okay, this is what's happening. It's written like it's a Saturday morning cartoon. It's not in any way an in-depth type of movie. They have all this sci-fi fiction and lore that they're working around, but we don't get any of that. And I get that you're supposed to suspend your disbelief. You're supposed to turn off your brains and enjoy the movie. That only goes so far. Now, this isn't anywhere near to the extent of, like, Fast and the Furious, where it's just totally ridiculous, impossible type stuff. Because this is already the type of universe where you have to suspend your disbelief to a certain extent. We have giant ro transforming cars, robots fighting a war on our planet. Like, I get that. But that doesn't mean that within that universe... Things ha don't have to make sense. They do. You still have to have some kind of gravity, some kind of connection through everything, and we just don't have any of that. And the last thing I'll say about the writing is this movie has no heart, no soul, no style. There's nothing to it other than gratuitous, generic action scenes with way too many explosions and nothing else to connect us to what's happening. It's, it's boring, frankly. Throughout most of the movie, it's not entertaining. Okay, so the writing's not good. We got that. Everything that it has anything to do with the writing is not good. But the acting, maybe maybe they can save it with some acting. We'll, we'll throw in some big names and it'll be good, right? Not so much. So we still have Mark Wahlberg from the last movie and this movie. And I know a lot of people are saying, ah, oh, Mark Wahlberg's the problem of these movies. No, he's not. He's not necessarily helping the movies, but he's not the problem. He's a symptom of the problem. They don't care what they're making. They just want to make money. Mark Wahlberg's name attached to it will make them a little bit more money. That's all it is. Is he the best actor in the world? No. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Does it matter? No. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It doesn't make a difference in these movies because they're not written well enough. They don't need good acting. Perfect example. We have Anthony Hopkins in this movie. Does he do a good job in his role? Absolutely. He always does. But does it matter? Not at all. It makes no difference because the movie's not good no matter what. We have two female characters in this movie, which is not surprising for Michael Bay. The first one is the young girl, Isabel. Isabella? Isabel. I think there's an A at the end, but it's spelled with a Z. They made a point of telling us that because we don't care. She's in the commercials. Okay, she's featured in all the commercials. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, we're going to have a female lead who's like a little girl, and that couldn't be less realistic. Well, don't worry, because she's barely in the movie at all. She has no role in the movie whatsoever, other than to have her in the movie. It's clear that they were using her for marketing and then not using her in the movie at all. She's in like a total of two scenes. Like big extended scenes that are cut up. But she's like in one place, not in anything else, and then she's in another place. And that's it. Really, really just for marketing. Which is kind of like the thing these days. First we had Ghost in the Shell marketing a bad guy that wasn't the bad guy at all. And then we have this movie marketing this girl and Optimus going bad and... Well, I'm not going to talk about Optimus going bad because that'll be a spoiler, but I will tell you, Optimus is barely in this movie at all, and we'll get to that in a second. But that's all it is. Everything is marketing for these movies. There's no soul, there's no heart, there's no art to it, it's just about making money. So we have the other female character, the female lead, who's the new hot chick, but we can't just have another hot chick. Everybody yells at Michael Bay for putting in hot chicks. So this is a smart hot chick who has an important role in the movie. Does it add anything? No. Does it hurt anything? No. Nothing would have added or hurt anything at this point. It's a Transformers movie that doesn't have a heavy focus on Transformers and is poorly made. So it really doesn't matter either way. <sighs> so we kind of we talked about the acting, but now we have to talk about the other main characters, which are the Transformers. So you would think, being the, the titular characters, they would have a large role in the movie. They don't. The way it felt to me was that there was no focus on the Transformers. They were in scenes. But we saw, like, I want to say three times did they actually transform. I think that was it. So that wasn't anything at all. Like, they could have just been robots. In fact, we have robots in this movie that don't transform at all, which I get that. But there's, like, no Transformer to the Transformers movies anymore. It's just generic sci-fi. And it's so disappointing. 
But let's talk about the ones that are in the movie. Okay, so it, it's mostly Bumblebee for the good guys. We have the two leftovers from the last movie. The, one's a samurai, and one is just like a guy that shoots things, I guess. And I guess they have some... Like, at least the samurai guy's got some character to him, but that's about it. And then we have Hound, who... John Goodman... Is his name Hound? I think it is. It's just a, gen a generic archetype character. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just... It doesn't matter. So Optimus is barely in the movie again. You'll probably dis be disappointed by how Optimus is utilized, despite the promo, all the artwork, DVD cover. I mean, we've, we know what the covers are going to look like. It's going to be some variation of the posters. You know, Optimus Prime, Transformers, eh, mostly Bumblebee and the other guys. And eh, it's not really Transformers. It should be Mark Wahlberg and the smart hot chick with some robot friends. That should be what it's called. And then we have the bad Transformers, the Decepticons. The last movie we had... Galvatron, Megatron no more. We have this weird, goofy-ass Galvatron, which was awful. And now this movie, Megatron's back. What? Explain that, please. A little bit. Maybe? No. Okay, you're not gonna. They're not gonna. They don't explain it. But he's back, and he looks totally different. And he's got this red mark on his face, which you guys have seen in the trailers and artwork. Optimus gets a red mark on his face when he goes bad. We, we've seen that. Megatron has no connection to Optimus in this. He has no connection to how Optimus gets that red mark as far as we know. How, why does he have the red mark? How does he exist? Name, name any of the explanations for this that you saw in the movie and I would be very happy. But I don't think you can because it didn't happen. So Megatron sets... Well, I'm, I can't talk about the plot. I'm not going to talk about the plot because we already know it's bad. So forget about that. But there are some Decepticons and how they come to be in the movie is stupid. But they do and they are all stupid, terrible characters. Totally. Totally stupid and terrible ridiculous it's so clearly just marketing they're trying to come up with ideas for toys and in fact it looks like a bunch of kids wrote this movie like maybe a 10 year old and then his three younger brothers brainstormed a bunch of ideas and that's how this movie got made and then michael bay put explosions to it and a soundtrack and that's about it it's just so bad the characters the plot everything is bad. There's some action in the movie, and by some I mean a whole lot, and I'm not the kind of person to say I don't like my action movies full of action. I do. But it has to be more than just non-stop boring action. And that sounds, that sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. It's a lot like the Man of Steel movie where every single second somebody was getting thrown through a building or punched in the same way across the sky. I mean... That movie's way better than this, don't get me wrong, but that's kind of like the same thing. It's just the same explosions and same fighting and same everything over and over again. It's so repetitive and it's so heavily edited. Not just the action, but the whole movie, including the action. And the pacing's terrible and the editing's terrible and the action is, I mean, it's well handled other than being incredibly boring. I mean, like, it's, it's shot well. Michael Bay can definitely shoot an action scene. But choreography-wise and, and plot around all of it, it's all awful. And speaking of editing, what is with the aspect ratio changing throughout this movie? I thought I was going crazy at first. I'm like, they wouldn't do that on purpose. Not in these random times. Totally did it. Like half the scenes, not half, maybe half of half the scenes. And I mean that literally, like half the scenes were just shot halfway with different aspect ratio. So there's black bars across the screen. Why? Why? It's not like one whole scene was this way. It's like half of this scene was, and then half of that scene was. And it's just... Nothing about this movie was good, except for the CGI. The CGI was fantastic. It looks just as good as any of the other ones ever have, given their time. This one may be even better. It looks fantastic. There's one scene with Anthony Hopkins that's clearly green screen, doesn't look great, but otherwise, it looks really, really good. The CGI was phenomenal. Looks great. And that's it. That's it for the movie. Everything was pretty much awful except for the CGI. The hot chick was hot, so I'll give her that. And that's it. So, final thoughts on this. Fanboys are going to like this movie. Whether they're Transformers or Bayformers fanboys, they're going to like this movie. Because they're fanboys. That's what they do. So we can discount that. Critics are going to hate this movie. This time it's justified. But we can discount that. So what about the, the people that like Transformers and just they're kind of going in with an open mind, hoping it's good, but we'll see how it goes. I, I think most people are going to skew toward the negative. Uh, I, I'm sure some people are going to enjoy it for the mindless action, and that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's still an enjoyable movie to some extent. 
but yeah, I think it's definitely going to skew south. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what the ratings are other than I've heard people say like a 15 or 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if that's user or critic or whatever, but I'm betting the critics totally pan this movie. I'm betting the users or viewers probably have it around... 15 to 20%. I think the fanboys aren't going to be enough to keep those numbers up. I think this is just going to bomb. It'll make money because box office big titles like this will, but it's not good and people are going to say so. That's my hunch. We'll see. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. <sighs> let's do this. Okay, so I did this video without any spoilers, but the comment section, let's talk spoilers. Okay, so if you don't want to be spoiled, don't scroll down. You, you could watch the video that worked out but don't scroll down if you don't want to be spoiled it won't really matter but if you don't want to avoid the comments but let's talk because i'm sure a lot of you know more about transformers than i do though i know a f I, I do know a fair bit of the fiction and i'm pretty sure this was not a great re representation of that so let's talk spoilers in the comments thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time